So we are with uh, Mr. Puneet Chatwal today, MD and CEO of Indian Hotels Company as uh, they launch Pathya, which is a sustainability and uh, social impact initiative. And uh, Mr. Chatwal is going to talk to us about the initiative as well as some uh, questions about the brand and uh, the hospitality sector. So Mr. Chatwal, uh, ambitious goals under Pathya by 2030, elimination of plastic, and uh, water waste reuse, organic waste management, portfolio to be certified. So how much of a paradigm shift is this going to be for the operations, the supply chains, uh, the resource management, staff skilling, the initiative? So I think uh, most important is that we're excited about the launch of Pathya today. A lot of things that we are communicating, we are already doing for several decades. <clears throat> so, I, I, I don't think that there is something which is really like such a big paradigm shift because as the oldest operating company of the Tata Group, uh, having community as our focus, having community as the center of our business is something which is deeply embedded in our DNA. And a lot of these initiatives that we are talking about, we were doing it. Now we will do it in a more structured fashion. We will do it in a more measurable fashion. And we are setting ambitious targets and goals to again demonstrate the leading position that we have, the responsibility that comes with such a leading position to lead the industry and to lead our brands into the new era uh, post the pandemic and to contribute not just to the community but to the earth, to the planet that we live in and bring in a meaningful difference and change in the way we work, in the way we uh, communicate and in the way we act and conduct ourselves. So how aligned in this is this initiative with the proposed uh, national tourism policy which has been put forth? before the government because that also talks of green tourism and destination development and uh, staff skilling so your initiative quite mirrors uh, those uh, Absolutely and I think that's the important thing the pandemic taught us it is important to be aligned so most of the associations are aligned and uh, I personally and we as a company have also contributed towards a national tourism policy which will be shortly unveiled and we've all given our inputs, including for the, the short and the medium term, but also India at 47, the opportunities of positioning tourism as a sector, yes. importance of granting tourism uh, the infrastructure and the hospitality, the infrastructure status, the inclusion in the concurrent list of the constitution, yes. and all the other uh, efforts that go with it, with the policy, uh, and it has been worked out in a very close collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism, with the Secretary of Tourism's office, with the Minister of Tourism, with the you know ADGs and the additional secretary, etc. So it's a very collaborative effort in which platforms like CII, uh, FIKI, uh, platforms like uh, Hotel Association of India are involved. And as you know, I, I, I am the president of Hotel Association of India and the chair of the National Council of Tourism. So a bit is mirrored and it is very good because then everybody is driving and moving in the same direction. Otherwise, if we go in all sorts of directions, then right. it's more difficult to get the job done. So uh, is there any calculation while we have, you know, clearly defined goals for 2030? to 100% of all those measures. So is there a calculation of how much carbon uh, footprint, how, how much uh, you know you reduce your carbon footprint? Is there any number to it? Well, what we said is that going carbon neutral is not good enough. We will have a positive balance uh, at the end of 30. And why we put most of the goals at 100% is we didn't want to do anything 90 right. or 95%. Right. Is either full or nothing and we need to strive and aim for the best. What about you know now that uh, international flights are resuming so how much volumes do you expect from uh, international tourists and also uh, how much of a loss would you see in domestic tourists because now they will also be traveling abroad. 
Well, an interesting question. It keeps coming up like if not daily, I would actually say even thrice a day. Uh, because the industry has suffered a lot. The industry has been uh, uh, confronted with a lockdown and now, as you rightly said, it will be starting. So there are a lot of expectations. Um, in my opinion, a lot will be the same as it used to be with a lot more improvements that will come our way. Uh, domestic was always very strong. It's only now we realized and discussed about it because the international was shut. But historically, domestic market has contributed to almost 80 to 85 percent of our revenues, depending on which brands you have. So if we talk about Taj palaces in Jaipur, Jodhpur, you know, Hyderabad, etc., then the component of the foreign business coming in was possibly much higher. Uh, then maybe ranging between 40 to 60 percent of the total revenues and that was primarily driven by driven by domestic in this time right. having said that I think a lot of that will come back because these are you know memories forever these are experiences forever so a lot of it will come back and uh, come back very strongly uh, it will take ho however some months in our calculations and the reason is very simple, it's the seasonality of the business. You know, May, June, July, uh, we don't expect an influx of so much of foreign tourism okay. which would like to go to such destinations. Mm -hmm. However, there is a pent-up demand on a lot of government uh, traffic, um, delegations, foreign delegations coming in at different levels of uh, ministers, prime ministers, heads of states. Uh, so I think... Uh, uh, we are very much positively looking forward, hoping and praying uh, that this fourth wave or fifth wave, you know, just stays away from us. Uh, and uh, we are already seeing that in the pickup and the business on the books, which keeps improving every day. So uh, for two years, the industry is, you know, dependent on domestic tourism. It was as it is always big. Uh, but now going forward, since now you've realized the potential of the domestic tourism, tourist, so is there any shift in strategy in terms of your offerings or even selection of destinations and promoting brands like Ginger? I would like to make a correction here. I think it's not now that we realize. We realized it long time ago. We are possibly the only hospitality ecosystem in India that covers so many destinations. We are getting close to 100 destinations in India. Ginger is a very interesting brand to watch uh, going forward. Uh, it was a great idea, but we have reimagined Ginger three years ago and repositioned it uh, and we'll be opening our flagship uh, in the next 10 months uh, in the city of Mumbai in Santa Cruz, almost a 375 room property. But there are many more uh, Ginger branded hotels which are expected to open. We're looking at anything between 6 to 10 Ginger properties in the next 12 months and a total of at least 18 properties amongst our various brands. Uh, we will get close to 100 homestays uh, and we are also hoping to scale up uh, significantly our home delivery and QSR business under the Cumin brand. So in our homestay, the Amas are getting very good traction, but it's a small business today. So we need to scale it up and uh, Taj, obviously is the backbone and is the pride of the nation, is the strongest hotel brand in the world. Uh, it is expected to keep growing our next opening. The grand opening is of Taj Exotica, day after tomorrow in Dubai. Right. Uh, our third property in Dubai, uh, following which next month we will open uh, our uh, second Taj branded property in Kolkata. Uh, we have two others, one is Selections, the Rajkutir and the Vivanta. So it's our fourth property just in Calcutta itself. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, last year we had opened the Taj Chia Kutir also in Darjeeling, it's the mm -hmm. same owner. So a lot of exciting openings mm -hmm. in the pipeline for this year. Okay. And, uh, and very, very interesting learnings that we have had in the last two years with the success of Rishikesh, yes. with the success of Pilibit House and Haridwar. Yes. Uh, we are looking forward to the opening and the launch of Vivanta in Katra right. following the presence we have had with Ginger in Katra. So mm -hmm. all in all things are after a very very long time 
looking positive. There is some, uh, you know, optimism uh, in the air, and and we are feeling uh, that very much, and we're seeing very good pickup on conventions and meetings in some of our properties. The Taj uh, Resort and Convention Center in Goa is getting a lot of bookings even in the summer months. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, that's a very encouraging sign. So you've talked about cumin and uh, you know it's been quite popular uh, but there is also this super app coming up. So um, do you think you know the apps like cumin etc would uh, would they still exist independently or they would be integrated under this uh, super app? Absolutely, they will be and they would be integrated under the super app. The super app will be a clearly uh, a great competitive advantage for us uh, with all the companies that are joining and as the founding members, it will increase the outreach for our various brands uh, and I'm expecting personally a lot of synergies, not only with other companies, but under a platform which caters to the needs of all and hopefully we'll all gain something out of it. So maybe you know uh, in now that Air India is also under the Tata Fall, so you have like three aviation brands. So any plans to have more synergy between the aviation and the hospitality brands? Especially for customers in terms of you know maybe combo deals or See, something like that? Uh, it's an interesting one. It's not that we were not catering to Air India before. 50% of their business, as an example, out of Delhi on flight kitchen yeah. or flight catering yes. was already being catered by Taj Sats. Yeah. So I think there is an opportunity to improve and help in the positioning, the quality of food, etc. so that uh, those limitations are not there. So it depends on the new management of Air India, the direction from the group, on the positioning, and we are there very much to contribute in our own small way and I think it's not just an opportunity for our group, it's the opportunity for the country, it's, it's always will be known as the national career and, uh, and we hope to, to make a positive difference. So a uh, couple of things about the Pathia initiative going back to that. So the renewable energy that you're going to you know, tap into. So are you setting up your own uh, infrastructure for that? Are you outsourcing? Uh See there are various models which work in various cities. India is a very heterogeneous country and yeah. we had embarked on this journey uh, with already with some major global players to help us out. For example with Siemens. Uh, you know, in how to uh, make our buildings more efficient from an energy perspective with Tata Power. So there is, it depends, you know, there's not one size fits all, but whatever is the best uh, practice, which is ideal for that property. Uh, metros work differently than tier two, three, four or five cities. So we'll find the best uh, formula and execute it accordingly. So uh, the information that I got doesn't talk much about, you know, in fact, oh, not at all about food waste. So um, uh, is that also included? It's always been a part of our, uh, uh, of our journey in the last several years. So I think we'll continue to do that very importantly, uh, continue to serve the orphanages and continue to serve uh, wherever we can uh, in terms of food and, and help out. Right. It was not just limited to meals to smile during the pandemic when we served 4.5 million meals right. while there was no wastage. Right. 